Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, November 15, 2022. A state of public emergency, SOE, has been declared in seven parishes for a period of 14 days, starting today. They include the entire parishes of Westmoreland, St. James, Hanover, Clarendon and St. Catherine, and all police divisions in Kingston and St. Andrew, with the exception of St. Andrew Central and North. The announcement was made this morning by Prime Minister Andrew Holness during a press briefing at Jamaica House. Mr. Holness says there has been an increase in criminal activities in these areas and maximizing the use of resources during the SOEs will save lives and property from the threat that exists. We expect, as we have seen, that once we have implemented a state of public emergency, there is a residual effect. So we, we expect that even for 14 days, we will have an impact on murder rates, a, a positive impact on public order and a, a positive impact on the recovery of guns and a positive impact on the reduction of shootings and a general improvement of the security circumstances heading into the Christmas season. Executive powers are given to the security forces on the state of public emergency to carry out search and arrest. The public is being encouraged to cooperate with instructions of law enforcement officers and give support by calling the JDF tip line at 876-837-8888 or the JCF tip line 311. In the meantime, the government says it will not relent in its efforts to improve the transport sector. This is in response to strike action taken by private public passenger vehicle operators on Monday. The drivers withdrew their services, calling for an amnesty to pay their outstanding traffic tickets without penalty. Commuters were left stranded, forcing some offices and institutions to close early due to student and staff shortages. Following a meeting of the Cabinet on Monday, a release was issued by the Office of the Prime Minister urging public transportation owners and operators to continue providing their services to Jamaicans. Regarding the request for an amnesty, the release insists that operators who have unpaid tickets must pay their fines. The government insists that it will not support lawlessness and disorder and commended the public's rejection of Monday's protest. In the context of high road fatalities and injuries resulting from reckless driving, the administration has reiterated its commitment to protect the commuting public and is encouraging discipline among road users. The government says it is undertaking internal processes to effectively implement and enforce the new regime under the Road Traffic Act 2018 and its 2022 regulations in order to secure greater accountability and discipline on our roads. Meanwhile, road safety efforts by the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch of the Police Force have been enhanced with the donation of 50 breathalyzers. The equipment, valued at over $3 million, will support the work of law enforcement in catching motorists driving under the influence of alcohol. The donation was made by Red Stripe through its Denos and Geddes Foundation at a recent road safety town hall. Assistant Commissioner of Police ACP Gary McKenzie points out that driving under the influence causes impaired eyesight or judgment, which can result in crashes. He says the police will request a breath test where the driver is involved in a crash or is suspected to be under the influence of alcohol based on the manner of driving. If you are driving at excessive speed, for example, you could be a breath test could be requested. So we have done some 12,000 plus breathalyzer tests so far this year and we aim to do much more because mm -hmm. when we look at our data the spread at which we want those tests to be done we are not sufficiently um, comfortable a new site has been identified for the construction of a fit for purpose police station in port maria st mary Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang and relevant stakeholders recently toured the 30-acre property, which is located near the Port Maria Hospital. It's enough to do not only a police station, but to look at a whole new municipal centre for Port Maria. Um, the government's thinking is on that line, but in the, right now we need a police station very quickly. We have the funding and we have the need. 
The properties owned by the Commissioner of Lands and Construction is expected to begin after the completion of the acquisition process and finalization of designs for the new station. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson is now looking for a temporary location to house officers stationed at the current base following recurrent flooding in that space. Persons can now access direct flights between Kingston and Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. The service, which officially began yesterday, is being operated by Aerojet. The straight flight will reduce travel time between both countries from more than 20 hours via Miami to less than two hours. The service also comes at a cheaper cost for a round trip at $252 US dollars, down from the average $800 US dollars. Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett said the achievement is a major milestone. The decision to enable improved connectivity between Dominican Republic and Jamaica is part of a broader and wider strategy of integrating the Caribbean more and of also creating backward connections between Central America and South America. The Dominican Republic's ambassador to Jamaica, Her Excellency Angie Martinez, says the non-stop air service will be a game changer in deepening bilateral relations. Having direct flight that connects Jamaica and the Dominican Republic is a need, it's a necessity, but it's also a dream that today we are seeing come true. And finally, the skills of over 1,700 hospitality workers have been sharpened after successfully completing a training course at the Jamaica Center of Tourism Innovation, JCTI. The graduation ceremony took place earlier this month in Montego Bay. In a virtual address, Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett congratulated the graduates and commended the success of the program. I'm particularly pleased to see among those receiving certification are 600 small food operators, 65 chefs and 40 persons with a certificate from the University of the West Indies in tourism and the law. I single these out because it is heartening to know that interest in tourism among Jamaicans is growing. According to Minister Bartlett, there are plans to expand the JCTI program to align with the American Culinary Federation certification. I can announce also that the JCTI is currently in the final stages of rolling out a new one-year program to expedite the certification of sous chefs in collaboration with the Heart NSTA Trust and the ACF. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.